Good morning and welcome to our IPW Bible study. I will be your instructor today and I'm Liz Daniels and I want to piggyback on what First Lady started on last week but she did an awesome job teaching on a faith refresher, how to conquer doing tough times. And I will go on to say how to win during tough times. You know, uh, we are living in unprecedented times. We could have never imagined all what we're going through. We could have never imagined this a year ago. No one could have. We've dealing with fires on the West Coast, East Coast hurricanes, floods. We're dealing with a pandemic. People have lost jobs. People have sick. People have died. It is a lot going on. So how do we get through these tough times? How do we get through these tough times? We must use our faith. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how to refresh your faith. And in anything, sometimes when you do stuff for a while, being a Christian for a while, sometimes you forget the fundamental things. And faith is your fundamental. Faith is the fundamental things of being a Christian. And so we have to get back to the fundamental things. And most of us um, was even living on earth 102 years ago during the Spanish flu. And during that time, we had 50 million people worldwide died. And now, as of to date, we at 868,000 people that has died worldwide. And that's a lot to wrap your head around. I mean, you know, when you turn on the news and they got the numbers, this, you know, these people, this amount of people have died, these amount of people are sick. And so it's a lot going on. It's a lot of racism, it's a lot of um, mayhem, it's a lot of, of um, uncertainty. So how, as a Christian, how do we get through those times? And I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna have to use your faith. You must use your faith during these tough times. Faith is the core of who you are as a Christian. It's the principal thing, it's the basic thing, it's what we all have to go back to because we, sometimes we forget, we get to running our race and we forget that it's our faith that's what's gonna get us through all these tough times and when we got all this stuff that's pressing on around us and about us, we have to use our faith. We're gonna to have to use our faith. And what is faith? Faith is a belief in God or a doctrine of a religion. A complete trust or confidence in something or someone. That's what faith is. So as Christians, we have to believe in God, right? We have to have total confidence in God. We have to put all our assurance in God that he will never leave us, he will never forsake us, that he will be with us even to the end of the world. We have to renew our faith. We have to refresh our faith because it's what's going to help us. And you know, when Jesus said when he comes back to the earth, he's coming back for faith, right? So as Christians, we have to exercise our faith. You always have to use your faith. Whether you know it or not, you are always using faith. You know, when you get in your car to crank your car up, you're using faith. You're using faith that that car is going to crank. You can drive across country and you get in your car and you have the faith that that car is going to crank and it's going to bring you back home wherever you went. You got faith every time that you go and um, sit in a chair. You got faith that that chair is gonna hold you. No matter how much you weigh, you believe, you believe it that that chair is gonna hold you. We are always using our faith um, subconsciously. We're always using our faith and we don't realize it, but we're, we're having faith in something or someone all the time. And sometimes we put our faith in man, in which the word of God tells us we're not supposed to do that and it advises us not to do that, but Sometimes we put our faith and our confidence in man. We put our trust in man, and man disappoints us, and he lets us down, you know? It's a lot of uncertainty right now. It's a lot of people lost their jobs. They put their faith in their jobs. And a lot of places closed down. A lot of people have put their faith in the government, and the government have let you down. People will let you down, things will let you down, but we know to be certain that God would never let us down. He would never let us down. Your faith must be in God. As a Christian, you got to have faith in God. You cannot put your faith in the systems of this world. You can't because as you can see, 
Everything that can be shaken has been shaken. I'm just thinking about it. Just think about last August this time. You would have never imagined we'd be going through this. In your wildest dream, I mean in your wildest nightmare, you could have never imagined this. Everything has, that can be shaken has been shaken. The financial institutes have been shaken. The world systems have been shaken. Countries have been shaken. The economy has been shaken. The food system has been shaken. The school systems has been shaken. The everything that you can think about has been shaken. And if we put our confidence in the world and the things of the world, then we're gonna fall and we're gonna fail every time. But we must have our faith in God and we must continue to put our faith in God and we must continue to trust God. And this is how we're gonna get through our trying times and the tough times that we're facing. Psalms 20 and seven says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. We have to remember the name of the Lord. We have to remember that we have a God that is on our side. We have to remember that we have a God that we can call upon. We have to remember that God is there for us. He's cheering us on, but we have to use our faith and we have to get back to the fundamentals of faith, right? And as it is in the natural, it is in the spirit, right? Faith is something that you have to use. If you don't use it, you'll lose it in a sense. You'll lose it. You have to exercise your faith. And you know what? I was thinking about, um, you know, um, a comparison to the natural. And, you know, um, Kobe Bryant has been named as one of the greats, you know, one of the greats. And we lost him this year. But Kobe Bryant had a awesome extraordinary workout. It is said in Sports Illustrator that Kobe Bryant, when he was in high school, that he would get up at five o'clock in the morning and he would practice and he would work out and practice before school start to seven, so two hours, he would practice. That's awesome. Now how many people, how many people do that? How many people get up and do that? To get to be, um, at another level, you have to do something at another level. And the same thing like these times and these trials that's, that we're facing, we got, to, we got to do more because we got more coming at us, so we got to do more. We got to get in our word more. We got to study God's word more. We got to meditate on God's word more. We got to pray more. We got to do everything more because we got more coming at us, right? And what he did, he had a, um, a regiment out of this world, and that put him up, that put him up to one of the greatest. He'll, be, he'll go down in history as one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived. And so what does that say about us as Christians? We have, um, in the Bible, we have like a, a hallmark of faith. We want to go down in the hallmark of faith, right? It's using our faith. How these people in the Bible in the olden days how they used their faith. They were thrown in the lion's den. They were beheaded. But they had faith in God. They didn't, they didn't lose their faith. They didn't lose their faith. And we cannot lose our faith. We got to continue to exercise and use our faith. Romans 10 and 17 says, so faith comes from hearing what is told. And I'm reading Amplified Bible. Faith comes from hearing what is told and what is heard comes from the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Okay, let me repeat that. So faith comes from hearing. That's how we get our faith, from hearing God's word. Hearing, I-N-G, hearing. So that's over and over and over and over again. We can never stop listening to God's word because that's what builds our faith. Okay? And what is heard comes by preaching of the message of Christ. And so what we hear comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. And so what did Christ say? When we hear God's word, what did Christ say? What did he tell us? 
What is his message? His word says, you are healed. His word says, you are more than a conqueror. You are the head and not the tail. I will never, never leave you nor forsake you. That's one of my favorite scriptures, y'all. And he said his, his thoughts are to prosper you, right? And he's perfecting those things that concern you. And those just a few of the things that Christ's word says. And so we, as we hear God's word, we're building our faith and we're hearing what God says about us and what God wants for us, right? And so um, during these times, during these trials, during these tests that we're dealing with, we got to um, embrace God's word like never before. We just got to hold on to it. Just like a, like a mad dog. We just got to hold on to God's word because that's what's going to get us through, right? That's what's going to get us through. Just think about Jesus. Um, Jesus had to endure the cross. It took faith because remember, he was God, but yet he, he humbled himself and came into the flesh. And we came into the flesh. You're going to deal with fleshly feelings and emotions. And so it took faith for him to do that. He said no man took his life, but he laid it down. He laid it down. It took faith. And see, he was our prime example. He was our prime example. And the things that dealt, he used his faith and those are the things that we have to do. He's our example, so we have to do the same thing that Jesus did. He prayed, he fasted, he got away, he pulled away from the crowd. And sometimes you gotta pull away from the crowd because the crowd would zap your faith. Sometimes you gotta cut that TV off, all the news. And um, I like hearing the news, but I don't oversaturate myself with the news. I like to know what's going on, what's happening. But you have to be mindful that you don't sit there day in and day out, day in and day out. You get more news than you get God's word. So what you think going to happen? If you get more news than God's word, what's going to happen? You get all this negativity. It is lowering your faith. It is it's lowering your faith and, and you know, your, your faith is getting weakened. It's not building you up. Faith is what builds us up. Because when we stay in God's word and when we stay in faith, your faith to say, okay, this number of many people die, but guess what? I'm not dying. I got a destiny. I got a purpose. God has purpose for me. I have a destiny, and I will fulfill my destiny. And when we hear God's word, then we speak God's word. When we hear God's word, then we speak God's word. We remind him of his word. And his word will not return to him void, but it must accomplish what he set it out to do. But you got to have faith to believe God that he will do it. You got to have faith. Faith is action. It's trust and it's believing. The Bible says faith without works is dead, right? Faith without works is dead. You got to exercise your faith. You got to use your faith. If you believe, if you believe in God, you believe in a God that you've never seen. You believe in heaven to go to heaven that you don't even know how to get there. You believe that your loved ones are there, but they have not come back and told you they there, right? That takes faith, that takes belief, we're trusting. We gotta take God at his word, and what he said he'll do, he will do. Okay, let's go to Hebrews 11 and one, and I'm reading in the easy read version of the Bible, and it says, faith is what makes real the things we hope for. Faith is what makes real the things that we hope for. It is proof of what we cannot see. Faith is, it, our faith reaches into the other realm and it pulls out from the other realm into our natural realm what we believe in God for. Faith brings into existence the things that we believe. That's what faith does. You know, it's a, um, one of them cartoons that say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And sometimes, you know what? You have things coming, you just have to, you say, I believe, I believe, you know what? Just shut everything, about everybody else out. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I trust God, I believe God. You have to do that. 
Sometimes you have to do that until you believe it. Because sometimes when you say it, you may not believe it when you say it. But you got to keep on saying it and you keep on trusting it. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I cannot begin to tell you all the things that I had faith for, but I had no physical evidence how God brought the past in my life. I mean, it's just, it just, it just mind-blowing things, what God has done. We're talking about refreshing our faith during tough times. We got to use our faith, guys. Sometimes you have to be reminded to stick to the fundamental things. It's no matter how long you've been a Christian, you're going to always have to go back to those fundamental things, the basic. It's just like, a, um, like I mentioned earlier, Kobe Bryant. How do you think help him become the basketball player that he was, the champion that he was? He stuck to the fundamental, th f fundamental things. That's what he did. He had to. You cannot get away from the basic things. You can try, but you'll find yourself um, not accomplishing your goal. You'll find yourself defeated. You'll find yourself um, not where you want to be. And then when you look back, you say, ah, I got away from what I, I got away from the core thing. I got away from the principal things. I got away from the basic things. It's the basic things. It seems simple, but God take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. You're going to always have to use your faith. It seems like, okay, how can you believe in something that you can't see? But that's how it is. <laughs> that's how it is. We have to trust. We have to believe and trust God's word and take him at his word, what he said, right? As Christians, we must use our faith. It gets us stronger and stronger. The more you use your faith, the stronger you get. It's just like Kobe Bryant. You know, he practicing and he doing those shots. I mean, you know, you got muscle memory. After so long, you just got muscle memory. Shh, shh, shh. Net but net, shh. Nut but net. Same thing. When the devil come at us, we don't use our faith so much that we got. Shh. We know we, our faith is just combating the devil. It's pushing them off. It's pushing them off. He can't even get to us. It's pushing them off because we we build our faith up that much. And see, when we hear negativity, things that's contrary to God's word, shh, that faith should come up in us. Automatic faith should come up. Faith should come up. When we absorb ourselves in the word of God, when we use our faith, when we exercise our faith, because you have to exercise your faith. And it's, it's, it's going to take, um, it's going to take over and over and over again. It's something as a Christian, you're going to always have to use your faith. It's the fundamental things of being a Christian. You can never get away from using your faith. The word of God said, when Jesus come back to the earth, what he's looking for, he's looking for faith. He's looking for faith. So we're going to always have to use our faith. No matter how long you have been saved, you're going to have to use your faith. You see some of these Christians that walk with God for years. They still got to, they still got to, have to, they still got to, walk, they still got to use their faith. And they'll tell you about their faith journey. And as we walk with God and as we use our faith and we can begin to see a track record with God. God, you did this. You did this and somebody been walking with God 80, 90 years, right? God, you did this in 1947, you know? And then they look like, God, you did this in 1969. And you did this in the 80s. And you did, and now you're up into the 2000s. And you're still God. And you're still moving. And you're still doing what you said you would do. And we have to go back and look at those things. Look at what God has already brought you from. That's going to help us get through these tough times. Because it's nothing called God by surprise. And you know what? God is blessing his people during these times. The world will say, you know, it's a lot of mayhem. And it is. There's a lot of stuff happening and going on. But as Christians, we in this world, but we're not of this world. We, 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 we in the, from the kingdom. We come from the kingdom. And so we should not be experiencing the same thing that other people are experiencing. We're using our faith. We should have peace. We should still have joy. We should have assurance knowing that God he got this thing all taken care of. Yeah, and I'm not going to pretend, you know, to be super spiritual. Sometimes things come and kind of, ooh, kind of hit you a little bit. And you have to wait a minute, devil. Mm -mm. You have to stop him. 
Sometimes you hear news and it'll kind of hit you. And like, uh uh. I had so many relatives in the hospital during this time, um, so family members and um, friends of the family um, that was sick and challenged during this time of COVID 19. And unfortunately, we did have some people that passed away, but still, we trust God. We trust God. Psalms 91, a thousand may fall by thy side and 10,000 by thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. We have to confess God's word. And I remember years ago, and some of the people that, some of the people that's been in the ministry for so long, they remember years ago the confession that we made. Every germ, every virus, every bacteria that comes in contact with our bodies must die immediately. And I often think about that since this has been going on, like, God, we've been saying that for years. Thank God. The weapon may be formed, but it will not prosper. Every germ, every virus, every bacteria that comes in contact with our bodies must die immediately. I don't care where it came from. China, wherever. I don't care where it comes from. It's got to die. Because we confess God's word. We have faith that no weapon that's formed against us is going to prosper. And we have to believe it. And see, faith is also believing. It's a, it's a belief. You got to trust it. It's a belief. It's, it's faith. It's work. When you're in faith, you're working. You're working. You got to work your faith. Faith without works is what? Dead. You got to work your faith. You got to trust God. Now, you got to do the things that um, the guidelines have required of us to do. You know, wear your mask, um, practice the social distancing. You got to... Um, Sanitize, do those things, you know, use wisdom, but we cannot get in fear. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And so we have to trust that. We have to trust that. Let's go to um, Mark 11, 23 and through 25, and I'll be reading the Amplified Bible. I assure you that most solemnly say to you, whatsoever says unto this mountain, be thou lifted up and thrown into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, in God's unlimited power, but believe that what he says is going to take place. It will be done for him in accordance to God's will. For this reason, I am telling you, whatsoever things when you are in prayer, in accordance with God's will, believe with confidence, trust that you have received them, and they will be given unto you. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Drop the issue. Let it go. So that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you of your transgressions and wrongdoings against him and others. So, that's a lot right there, right? You want to have mountain moving faith is some things that you got to do. And some things that you got to do. You first, you got to believe in God, unlimited power, God. Sometimes we believe God, but we think, okay, God, you can, do, you can do that, but you can't do this. You know, we think God is limited in his power. He's not limited in his power. He is not limited in his power. And we think some things are too big for God. There is nothing too big for God. I remember the Holy Spirit correcting me some years ago because I used to have this saying that I used to say, long as there's breath in your body, there's hope. And the Holy Spirit, he, he rebuked me, and he reminded me, hey, I could, bring, I could bring you back from the dead. That's happened. People have come back from the dead. He brought life to respect from the dead. So even if life has left your body, God still can bring you back. So there is, you, we have to have faith in God and his unlimited power because his power is unlimited. That means it never runs out. We could go, much as we need to go and draw, and much as we need to go and pull, and much as we need to go and get, it's still there. It's unlimited. Okay? So, it says when you, when you stand praying, what we got to do, if you got anything against anyone, you got to forgive them and you got to let it go, right? You have to let it, you, it says in the Amplified, drop the issue, let it go. Just drop it. Just drop it and let it go. Just drop it and let it go. Sometimes, you know, we hold on to things for years. People have held on to things so long, they don't even know 
what they were even mad about. <laughs> they done they forgot. They done held on this so long, they don't even know. They can't even remember what it was about. I'm just mad. Well, what you mad about? I don't know. You done held on it so long, but you are hindering your prayers. You are hindering your relationship with God. You got to let it go. If you hold anything, anything or anything that anybody has done to you, and I know, Lord knows I know, people can hurt you. But you have to let it go. You have to forgive them. You have to pray and ask God. Say, God, they hurt me. This is real hurt. But you know what? I'm not going to hold this. I'm not going to house this because I don't want anything that's going to hinder my prayers. I don't want anything that's going to hinder my relationship with you. I'm going to release this and let this go. And you have to. And it may take some time, but you work on it. I'm, I promise you. I've been there. God will help you, and you'll be able to get through it, and you'll be able to let it go. Because you don't want anything that's going to separate you from your God, right? You don't want anything, okay? So as we refresh our faith and how we're going to get through tough times, you know how we're going to do that? We're going to have to put on the whole armor of God. We're going to have to put on God's armor. And you'll find that in Ephesians 6, 10, and through 18. And that's an amplified version I'm going to read. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through the union with him. And in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God. See, sometimes we don't put on that full armor. We have step it. We have doing. We, you know, we, we, you know, we might pray, but we don't read the word. We may read the word, but we don't pray. We may look at, um, we may look at someone preaching on TV, but we don't go to church. So we ain't got on our whole armor. We, we, you know, we have step it. We have doing. Put on the full armor of God. For his precepts are like the splendor armor of a heavy armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against the schemes and the strategies and the deceit of the devil. Why do we need to put on the armor of God? It tells us why we need to put on the armor of God, so we'll be able to stand against the schemes, the strategies, and the deceits of the devil. That's why we need to put it on. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, so you're not only contending with physical opponents, this is spiritual things, spiritual opponents that you're dealing with, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces in this present darkness, against the spiritual forces and wickedness in high supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God, the complete armor. So you can have an armor, but there's a complete armor, right? Put on the complete armor of God so that you will be successfully Resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and have done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in the place fully unmovable. So let's go back. Therefore, put on the complete arm of God so that you will be able to stand successfully. So we put we're dealing with some things now. As we talked about, we got a pandemic. We got fires on the on the West Coast. We got hurricanes in, on the East Coast. We got floods. We got a pandemic. We got, we got racism. We have civil unrest. We got riotings. We got a lot of people sick, people dying, people out of jobs. It's a lot going on right now, right? So we need to put on the complete armor of God that we're going to be able to stand in crisis. Stand firm in your place, fully prepared, unmovable. Fully prepared, unmovable. And see, you know what? When a battle comes, you can't go get ready for battle. You got to already be ready, right? You have to already be ready. It's like, wait, let me go put my armor on. Boom, they done, they done shot you. They done killed you. No, you got to already have your armor on. And as Christians, we have to already have armor on. We got to constantly put on the full armor of God. And that's why sometimes we, we need those reminders because we can, all can get slack. We all can get relaxed. We all can get, you know, humdrum sometimes, you know. But we're in a battle. We're in a fight. And we have to be reminded of that. And the Word of God tells us, fight a good fight of faith. A good fight. A good fight is to fight when you're winning, right? When you're winning, that's a good fight. But if you're not winning, it's not a good fight. Okay? Let's continue on to 14. So stand firm in your, stand firm. Hold your ground. So you got to hold your ground. Having tightened the widened bed of truth, personal integrity, more courage, 
around your waist and having put on the breastplate and the righteousness and upholding heart, upright heart and having strapped your feet with the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and readiness producing by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith for with it you can extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one and take the heaven of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. With all prayer and petitions, pray with specific requests at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit and with the view. Stay alert in all perseverance and petitions, interceding in prayer for God and God's people. That's a lot right there. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith that will extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. It is said that the Roman soldiers, you know, the Roman soldiers, they, their, their, um, their armor was made out of iron, right? And then they, they would, um, and had layers of leather underneath it. And they would soak, they would soak that leather. And before they, when they would get dressed, they would soak, the, they would soak it in water. They would soak the leather in water. And they would also, and their shield had leather. Uh, underneath their shield and they will soak that in water and so that when they will go to battle when the enemy will shoot the fiery darts that water will out in the fire <clears throat> think about that the water will out in the fire God's word we're supposed to be watered with his word right watered with his word saturated in his word baptized in his word covered under his word immersed in his word and as we do that, as the enemy throw those fiery darts at us, it's going gonna, it's gonna to extinguish them. It's going to put them out, right? That's how we're going to get through these fiery trials and these tests. That's how we're going to get through these tough times. We've got to use our faith. We, gotta, we all need a faith refresher sometimes. You've got to use your faith. You've got to use the word of God. You've got to stay on your post. Feed your faith with God's word. Feed your fears, worries, concerns, uncertainties, doubts, unbeliefs, your unknowns, your what ifs, your frustration, and your negative thoughts. Your faith will help you to get through tough times, the rough patches in life, the pandemic, the COVID-19. We stand on God's promises and we look back at all the things that he's already brought us through, right? I have a track record. You have a track record with God of all the things that he's already brought you through. God has unlimited power and unlimited abilities and unlimited resources. God is not man. Let's put all our faith in him. All our faith in him. Because he will not let us down. He's God Almighty. He's God Almighty. God Almighty. He will not let us down. Amen. Um, that is my conclusion of the Bible study today. And right now, I just want to pray for those um, that may be going through some tough times. You got some some trials going on. Maybe you got a little weak in your faith. Maybe um, you know you got away from the fundamental things. You got away from your faith. You got a little weary and well doing. So I like to pray for you today. Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up your people before you, and we ask you right now to keep your people encouraged, motivate them, strengthen them, Father God. Meet every need in their lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless them like only you can, God. In the name of Jesus, we bind every spirit of let down and disappointment and hurt and pain. And Lord, we ask you right now to just go in, God, and to strengthen them, Father. Strengthen their hearts and their minds. Strengthen them, Father God, to in your word, God. Strengthen them, Father God, that they keep running, God, that they renew their strength, Father, like the eagle in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you, God, for your anointing, God. Your anointing that remove every burden and your anointing that destroy the yoke of the enemy. Strengthen your people, God. Increase their faith, God. Pour out your faith upon them even more, God. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And we thank you for tuning in today and listen to the Bible study. Use your faith. Don't ever let go of your faith.